Immutability is the concept of creating objects that cannot be changed once they are created. This means that once an object is created, its state cannot be modified. Let's dive into functional programming. A good functional programming code uses pure functions. We'll compare structured programming and functional programming through an example. In this Java code, we have a list processed using a for loop and a conditional statement for the numbers. The problem? There's a lot of mutation happening. The total variable is constantly changed, even the loop's internal variable i is constantly mutating. This will create a lot of challenges if we were to make this code concurrent. A better way to tackle this is by using pure functions. Pure functions are functions that return the same result for the same input every time we call it. And to do so, we have two principles. First, the function does not change anything. And second, the function does not depend on anything that may change. With this understanding, we can transform the original code as follows. Simply put, we have a stream, then the filter function generates another stream. Similarly, the map function creates another stream, and finally, the sum produces a number. Everything here uses pure functions and nothing is mutated. This being said, how can we ensure our objects are immutable? Let's examine a basic Java class. It consists of a primitive, a list, and a typical constructor, getters, and setters. In order to make this class immutable, first we have to get rid of the setters and only assign values in the constructor. So far, so good, but it's not enough. Next, we need to set our fields as final to prevent reference changes and make our class final so we cannot extend it. But does the final keyword prevent us from modifying the fields? The answer is no. Final only prevents us from changing the reference. Consider a scenario where we use the getter to access the list and then add or remove values from it. In this case, our object is still not truly immutable. To achieve this, we need to return a copy of the list in the getter and also in the constructor assign a copy of the list. By doing so, no one can get to our list reference. Now, of course it is not possible to only use immutable objects and pure functions. As developers, we must handle various external inputs and modify a significant amount of data. So how do we take advantage of the immutability benefits? The key lies in structuring your code in layers. Write a small layer of mutable code and wrap everything with a big layer of immutability. For example, you can make the repository as your mutable part and design anything else in pure functions and immutable objects. There are several benefits of using immutable objects, including thread safety, performance, and readability. Immutable objects can be shared between threads without the need for synchronization. Just take a look at the previous example and decide which block of code is more easily made concurrent. Regarding performance, immutable objects can be cached which can improve performance. It can also improve performance by reducing the need for defensive copying. Also, immutable objects are easy to reason about and can improve the readability of your code. Immutability plays a crucial role in creating more stable and predictable code. When working with immutable objects, there are several common mistakes to avoid, including allowing mutable objects to be referenced. If you allow a mutable object to be referenced by an immutable object, the mutable object can still be modified. Another common mistake is not using defensive copying. If you don't use defensive copying when passing objects between methods and threads, the original object can still be modified. Immutability is an important concept that can improve the stability and performance of your code. By creating immutable objects, you can ensure that your code is more predictable, secure, and readable. Remember to follow best practices and avoid common mistakes when working with immutable objects. If you enjoyed this content, I am sure you will like this next video. Drop a like, hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.